What's going on guys, it's Investing Hustler here and today I have lots of news on the marijuana industry. I have a new analyst price target for Aurora Cannabis, also for Cantrust. Also, I read an article about how Canopy Growth made a mistake on their earnings and that explains why their stock declined. Actually, I'm gonna double check right now to see if their stock actually did decline. So yeah, Canopy Growth is down 2.77%. Also, I have an article on three arguments for and against buying Aurora Cannabis. I'm just going to go straight to the article. We're going to look at Aurora real quick. Right now, Aurora is only up two cents, so 0.22%. It's going to be very hard to move this company right now. More shares are being diluted. I've spoke about this a lot of times. So now Aurora has 998 million shares outstanding, almost at a billion how much more shares is Aurora going to dilute? We'll go straight to that real soon. So let's go to three arguments for and against buying Aurora Cannabis. So I'm just going to go straight to the argument. Three very good reasons Aurora Cannabis can make you rich. So with this in mind, below you'll find three arguments in favor of buying one of the largest publicly traded pot stocks in the world. Afterwards, I'll tackle three arguments against buying Aurora Cannabis. So if there's a clear top reason to buy into Aurora Cannabis growth story, it's the company's peak production potential. Although Aurora's management team has guided to an excess of 500,000 kilograms annually when running on all cylinders, it's hard to see the company's near a figure this slow. Rather, management had been calling for the 570,000 kilos prior to purchase of prior to the purchase of ICC Labs in South America for 264 million Canadian dollars late last year with 92,000 square feet of existing production and 1.1 million square feet of under construction greenhouse capacity ICC Labs should help push Aurora close to the 700,000 kilograms per year so even though production isn't everything the company's sheer amount of annual output should help lead to ample long-term supply deals with domestic provinces and overseas countries where medical weed is legal also, the cannabis industry tends to benefit from economies on sale. This suggests that as production rises, Aurora's per gram production costs should fall. So also, Aurora has perhaps the most impressive overseas footprints of any marijuana grower. Let's go to the third reason. The third reason Aurora Cannabis looks to be a buy is the company's focus on the medical marijuana community. So let's just go to the bad now. Three arguments why Aurora will send its investors to the poorhouse. To begin with, it's a company that's been blessed with a couple of quarters of profitability due to a one-time benefits, but that's, but that's been losing money hand over fist on operating basis. So that's one reason. Let's just move on to the other one. Secondly, Aurora Cannabis remains in the shadows in the partnership department. Whereas Canopy Growth landed a $4 billion equity investment from Constellation Brands, Kronos snagged a $1.8 billion equity stake from Altria, and Hexel formed a joint venture with Molson Coors Brewing. The largest producer by peak output is still by itself in the corner. There were reports that Coca-Cola was interested in a partnership or possible equity stake in Aurora this past September, but a deal was never reached. Without a brand name partner with a keen marketing prowess, Aurora could struggle to gain the same validity as its peers. So third and finally, and you knew this was coming and there's ongoing share-based dilution. Until recently, pot stocks have had minimal or no access to non-dilutive forms of financing, such as lines of credit or bank loans. Instead, they've often turned to bought deal offerings, which involve selling common stocks, convertible debentures, options, and or warrants to raise capital to undertake their expansion strategy. While these offerings are successful, they also wind up ballooning a company's outstanding share count, which weighs on existing investors and pushes down the earnings per share of the profitable companies. Aurora's outstanding share count is now just a stone throw away from $1 billion, and it was at $60 million less than five years ago. So yes, that is what's killing Aurora Cannabis right now, 998 million shares outstanding. When are they going to stop? I'm pretty sure at some point this year, we're going to hit 1 billion plus shares outstanding. Fingers crossed that they don't, but that's the one thing that's killing me with Aurora. That's the one thing that's making me hesitant to purchase Aurora at this price. But if Aurora does decline, of course, I will be buying some more Aurora shares because I do still believe in this company long term. So let's move on to the marijuana production break in records this company to benefit. Let's just find out what company they're talking about. As production grows, the need for energy efficient usage will as well. That's why we're very interested in CleanSpark, ticker symbol CLSK. The company has developed a microgrid power solution for the cannabis industry, cuts the monthly electricity bill of indoor grow houses by up to 82%. But maybe CleanSpark is a new company you guys should add to your watch list, ticker symbol CLSK. 
And this is the title of the article, if you guys want to check it out. The Marijuana Production Breaking Records, This Company to Benefit. Just type that in on Google. So let's move on to Canopy Growth's mistake that they made on their most recent earnings. So this, this article is titled, Canopy Growth Restates Earnings Figure Stock Sinks. So on February 20th, Canopy Growth issued a press release saying that it had reported an incorrect number for adjusted EBITDA for the nine months that ended on December 31st. The company revised its adjusted EBITDA losses from 69 million Canadian dollars to 155 million Canadian dollars. According to the company, this error occurred due to an error in the formula on its spreadsheet. So that's that's not a small mistake. That's almost double um, the losses. If anything, that's more than double. So they predicted it's adjusted a bit the losses to be 69 million Canadian dollars, but the actual figure was 155 million Canadian dollars, which explains why Canopy Growth is declining. So if you guys want to check out this full article, you guys could type this out. Canopy Growth restates earnings figure stock sinks. Well, it's not looking that bad. They're only down, I think, two point something percent. I'm just going to double check right now what they're at. So, yeah, they're only down two point seven percent. That's not bad for what seems to be a pretty big mistake because that's a huge difference. When you go from sixty nine million to one fifty five, that's that's not we're not talking pennies here. We're not talking a million or two. We're talking over eighty million dollars here. So now let's move on to what you guys probably came for, which is the new Aurora Cannabis Analyst Consensus target price in February. So Aurora Cannabis has been almost flat since it's reported its earnings on February 11th. To learn more about the company's earnings, read blah blah blah. In this part, we'll discuss analyst recommendation and price target. So right here, you have price, you have the chart, and as you can see from this chart, it looks like Aurora's new price target is fourteen dollars. So that's looking good. But we're gonna read it, and then we're gonna see what they say. In February, analyst consensus recommendation for Aurora Cannabis was a buy. The recommendation month over month from a total of six analysts remained unchanged. However, analysts were less bullish on the stock in February. Among the six analysts. Two recommended a strong buy, two recommended a buy, one recommended a hold, and one recommended a sell. So the target price. The consensus target price for Aurora Cannabis in the February is $13.70 Canadian dollars, which increased from $11.80 Canadian dollars. Aurora Cannabis closed at $9.20 Canadian dollars on February 19th. The current target price would leave room for 49% increase. The median target price for the stock was even higher at 15 Canadian dollars which increased from 13 Canadian dollars a month ago. Aurora's peers, MJ, including Canopy Weed and Hexel, also have a consensus buy recommendation. Next, we'll discuss Afria's target price. So I'm just going to go straight to the tar price target for Afria. So the consensus target price for Afria in February is $16.30 Canadian, which increased from $15.70. Uh, Afria closed at $12.80 Canadian dollars on February. The current target price would leave room for 27.3% upside. And the median target price for the stock was 15 Canadian dollars, which also increased from 14.5 Canadian dollars in January. But now I'm going to move on to the analyst price target for uh, CanTrust. What analysts recommended for CanTrust in February? Let's go straight to the price target. In February, analyst consensus recommendation for CanTrust was a buy. The month over month recommendation from a total of 11 analysts remained unchanged. Among the 11 analysts, four recommended a strong buy, while seven analysts had a buy recommendation on the stock. Also, none of the analysts had a hold or sell recommendation on the stock for the next 12-month period. So I did talk about this on my live stream. We're going to look at Cantrust. And I'm just going to say, sometimes numbers don't have to make sense in the marijuana industry. Because right now, when you look at when you look at Cantrust valuations, they do seem a little overvalued, and I'm gonna stand by that. I said this in the morning, and I I will stand by that because you look at their their PE ratio. Cantrust currently has a 62 PE ratio. You look at their price to revenue ratio, 33. Price to sales, 58. But these analysts are still recommending it a buy. Just like I said, these numbers don't have to make sense right now. This is a growth industry, and a lot of these companies have a very high PE ratio. For example, some of them are in the hundreds. I've even seen some marijuana companies in the thousands. I'm talking about PE ratio. Their PE ratio in the hundreds or thousands. So considering um, Cantrust is in the 60s, I still consider that high 
but it doesn't have to make sense. According to these analysts right now, Cantrust is a strong buy and a buy. So let's move on to the target price. The consensus target price for Cantrust in February is $19.60, which increased slightly from $19.50. Cantrust closed at $11.50 Canadian dollars on February. The current target price would leave room for a 69.9% increase. The median target price for the stock was at $15.50 Canadian dollars, which remained unchanged. So that's it for Cantrust. And there's also some other good news coming up for Cantrust. There's a, there's an article right here. Does Cantrust look cheap? Okay, so I'm going to move on to the final article, which is Cantrust to start trading on the New York Stock Exchange on February 25th. So I do think this is big news for Cantrust. It might potentially push this company forward because being listed on the New York Stock Exchange is usually a good thing for the company. Unfortunately, it wasn't a good thing for Aurora Cannabis. So just keep an eye out on that. Cantrust, ticker symbol TRST. So yeah, keep an eye out on for Cantrust on February 25th. They will be officially listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And that's it for now, guys. If you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, don't forget to hit that notification bell and smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.